Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Get a sign-up bonus of 200% up to $25,000 when joining today. Sign up now. Terms and conditions apply. Vote for IFL in this year's Sports Podcast Awards. Go to www.sportspodcastgroup.com and vote for us in Best Combat Sports Podcast and the Diverse Voices Awards categories. IFL Pod, available across all major streaming platforms now. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We're here at the Boxing Booth Gym. It's media day for Joshua Boatsy, who takes on Dan Aziz next week at Wembley Arena. Delighted to bump into Mr. Mark Prince and Mr. Spencer Fearon. How are you, both of you, first of all? Yeah, feeling nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, you know. Even better for seeing you, Joe. Um, yeah, let's talk about it. What brings you, both of you, down here today? What do you mean, what brings us down? Joshua Watsi has brought us down. <laughs> and Boxer said, Spence, do you want to come down for a media day and do a breakdown? So I thought, they said, who could we get? So I said, get Mark Prince, former world title challenger and incredible fighter in his own right. So I said, bring Mark Prince down. He was a light heavyweight who he could gauge this because Mark Prince also understands uh, when, when you have a, a fight for the culture, just like similarly to what Mark Prince had when, when Mark Prince went out and, and, and beat Morris Core, which should have been for the British title, but it wasn't, right? Uh, he's going to understand that. So that's what we're down there for, to, you know what I mean? So we can semester something and, and hear, like, guys who've been in it and, and to get their analogy on how they see Joshua Boatsy versus Dan Aziz, which is a fantastic fight on Boxer. Uh, it's going to be live on Sky, Sky Sports on the 3rd of February. And I think it's a really, really good fight, which went under the radar a little bit, but now it's not. People are talking about it. People like the streets are talking about it. The barber shops are talking about it. The loser of this fight is going to have to grow an afro because he can't go back in the barber shops. It's one of them kind of things. It's a, it's a big fight, man. It's, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Mark, when you see a fight like this, two guys from the same area, friends, turnt rivals, surely it kind of gets every boxing fan going, but someone who's been in there, done it himself, massive fight next week. Look, it's mouth-watering, bottom line. It's a, it's a fight fans fight, right? All the fans want to see these kind of fights, and boxers putting it on. And that's what I think is so wonderful, because we need more matchups like this. Guys need to stop being so strategic and afraid to kind of fight the fights that can put an, a, a mess up on their career, put a loss on their career. But I just think that we need these fights and boxing needs these fights. When you see two guys have come up in very, very different ways, Joshua Boatsy, bronze medalist in 2016 Olympics, then Dan Aziz, he come through the really hard way, every area title through to British... It's a really pick and fight, isn't it? Yeah, it, I can't, it speaks to fighters in different walks of life, right? The ones that want to come up in the Boatsy way and kind of feel like it's a bit perfect. I need to make all of these right moves. I need to win all these right fights. And then you've got the Dan Aziz that's come up the hard way, hasn't got the, you know, all the perfect promotion and everything going right for him, but he keeps winning. He keeps pulling out wins and cleaning up the scene. He feels like the clean-up man, because right now he's winning all the right belts, the British, the Euro. He's going to coming up the old school way. And so the was he, was he working sanitation? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> was, is he a dustman, is he? Well, you're taking he's leave. far from it, man. Yeah, listen, he, listen he, all he's going to give him a donkey now, jacket. You're going to give him a donkey jacket, he's yeah? He's going to be in a position <laughs> where he is ready to take a world title. Imagine mm -hmm. if that dream came true. Imagine if that dream came true and Dan made that happen against all the odds. Because it's not everyone talking about Dan Aziz. Everyone's talking about Boatsu throughout his career, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now he's at this position where he could just tear up the script. Can he do it? And that's the kind of things that we love about the fight game. Can you answer that question? Who's going to show up? Who's got the most heart? Who wants this? I want to see the fight now. And yeah, after that, yeah, after that yeah. little monologue, um, Spencer, yeah. can Dan Aziz do it? How do you see the fight going? No, you know what? It's not a case like, number one is this, let's be real. Two men of their background and where they've come from, right? Forget about what they've accomplished in boxing. Forget about Dan Aziz becoming a, a British champion, a Commonwealth champion, a European champion. Forget all of that. Forget about Joshua Boatsy 
on, on, the, on the fabulous things that he did in the amateurs, going to the Olympics, meddling, becoming British champion. Forget about that. The fact is that these two men do not fit the narrative of a stereotype. These are two well-versed, educated men who went to university and they're university graduates, right? Now, I'm sure that must be the first time in British boxing history, especially in the light heavyweight division, that we have two university graduates fighting for the British title. For that and that alone, they're a credit to their community and also a credit to their country. Do you think we need to see more of that, Mark? Um, kind of, we all know the stories from rags to riches, but boxing's a sport that anyone can take up at any time. And just because you are from a first background, just because you are educated, you can still get in and become the best of any sport, really. I'm going to keep it real with you. It's no, not you highlighted. We want you to lie to it's us. It's not highlighted enough. There's loads of boxers that are university graduates, but because it's a street sport, that's the original tradition that boxing's come from, it's given the guy that's got really come from a tough background an opportunity to make it. That's why that's talked about so much. Antonio Barrera, um, you know, Mar Marco Antonio Barrera was a, a law graduate. You know, he, he's, he's, there's so many fighters that have done their thing on, on that level of academics, right? But we don't talk about it as much because the story sounds more, you know, powerful when it's you've come from nothing. It's not as tantalizing, yeah, yeah, yeah. You come yeah. from nothing and come up. So I don't think it's because it, this doesn't happen. This happens on a regular basis because guys want to choose this sport because the sport's so exciting. You know, it, it, it really tests your spirit as a man. Can you overcome adversity? How do you handle difficulties? How do you handle challenges? Because every fight has got a different style. But so this then, fight here is going to be that, you know, Mark. This, this fight, fight here is going to bring out that in both of these guys. 100%. Because, and the next thing as well, you know what? Craig Richards, yeah, it's like he's kind of gone on, like, under the radar. It's like he came out second best against Joshua Whites, which was a wicked fight. Mm -hmm. That Absolutely. fight went underneath the radar. This fight hasn't gone underneath the radar because, like I said, you know, many people in the barbershops are talking about it. The people in the West Indian takeaways are talking about it. The people in the Africa takeaways and, and Africa restaurants are talking about it. Yeah. It's that kind yeah. of fight. You know what I mean? And, and that's what's good about it because when I got in the barbers, you know what I mean? We got Colby Cuts, he's got my shape up today, fiber sprays, right? And like, sharp, yeah, man, come on, I'm sharp. trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to keep up to you, Mark, right? So <laughs> when I, when I, when I turn up, seriously, I'm seriously, oh, I go, right, self, right, bro. right? So when I turn, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm going in the barbers and they're talking, ah, you know what I mean? My, my barber Colby saying, ah, oh, he's, he's gone in this, and he's saying, what, are you, are you, are you taking me? Are you taking me? So what this is, this fight is a cultural fight. Yeah. It's for the British title. And the major thing is, is we want to find out who makes the best jollof rice? Is it Nigeria or is it is it, you know I mean, or is it Ghana? That's what we want to know. Who makes the best jollof? All the Ghanaians write in the comments right now. Spencer, are you crazy? We make the best jollof. Yeah, you know I mean, it's mad, but this is this is what I'm looking forward to. It's let great. Me, let, me, let me share something here yeah, with you. You see this fight? It's all about your mindset. Because Spencer made a really good point. Forget all their records. Forget the titles. These are two guys that know each other really well. They spar each other mm -hmm. a lot. And it's going to boil down to, you know, who's going to be able to step up and really want this more? Because all the sparring and all the experience they've gone through won't count for nothing. When 10-ounce gloves are on, when there's no headgear, mate, you're going to really find out who's got the skill set, who's experienced enough, and who's ready for the world title level. Because this is what's going to prepare them for that world title stage. Here's the things that will make the difference. Bawatsi hasn't been fighting as regular as um, Dan Aziz. That mm. can play a part in this. Championship rounds, you know, how you, how are you able to, when your second win comes up, these are the things that fighters go through. And it could play a part in the fight if Dan Aziz, as a man with, as Spencer says, got his Hagler style and he keeps the pressure on and he got, keeps his good, nice guard up, and he's not getting through if, if Boazzi's not breaking him down the way he'd like to because he's a great body puncher. So we're going to see, I think, the things that make the difference for this fight is the jabs. They're both good jabbers. They're both good body punchers, but I think Boazzi uses the body punch a lot more. That's going to count in this fight. Who is but you know, Boazzi's a lot faster than Dan is, though, you know that? 
he's a lot he's, he's, he's a lot he's a lot faster I think he than Dan. Gets the edge on yeah, I mean, speed. yeah, he's, he's he's a lot faster than Dan. Yeah. But the thing with Dan, he's he's like he's very methodical in his work. He's very precise in his work. 100%. And I think this is more to do like and I'll say this with Joshua Boatsy here. I yeah. think Joshua Boatsy has kind of had an identity crisis. Because yeah. you go see him, he wants to be a Vandal Olifield. And that's been in from road. Because yeah. I remember, I know guys, that, because they're both from my area. So yeah. I know guys who play Sunday League football. And like when things got sticky on the football field, Joshua Boatsy was having it with the whole team to fight, man. Yeah. He's that guy. Yeah, he's a real fighter. Right, he's, a, right, he's a real fighter. Yeah, he's a real fighter. He's so he's heart. got that, right? But now that he's linked with Virgil Hunter, right? There's signs where, like, even from before, you can see he's, he, he's like kind of allowed Andre Ward on certain things. So I think it's more to do with like there's an like identity crisis within Joshua Boatsy. If he can address that, which I believe that he should be able to address, then he's going to come out victorious. But the thing about it is this: the reason why I'm saying don't write off Dan is because he's accomplished so much, and Dan Aziz knows like, right, this is my time, this is my turn to shine, and like people don't, people, people think I'm, I'm going to lose because you're realistic. Say, bro. Oh, because people feel I'm going to lose. Underdog. Right, I'm the underdog. Yeah. The, that's when we're going to see the best. This is going to be it's a great fight. I'm really looking excited. forward to this, bro. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. So last week I spoke to you at the Fury and Garnu presser, Spencer, yep. and it was discussed about uh, Matchroom versus Queensbury taking place in Saudi Arabia. How refreshing is it that we're still getting a great 50-50 all-British fight happening in London on British soil? Because it is fantastic that Saudi are injecting money, but it's important to keep the roots in Britain. I hear that, yeah. <laughs> But I'm gonna just be real with you. I'm Muslim. I'm going with the money. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey, assalamu alaikum, Turkey, I'll shake. No, I'm no, on the, no, no, it is because it's like it's good that all these fights are going out to Saudi, but uh, and like they're having all of these things right now, and I think that's absolutely excellent, right? Because there is it's, it's prize fighting. We're fighting for money at the end of the day, right? It's great, but I know that these two men are being financially rewarded, and also the British fans can get to see a fight uh, of, of magnitude, which could, it could be one of these kind of fights that it could either be a stinking blowout, which I don't think it's going to be, or it's going to be a classic. And I think we're going to get a classic come February the 3rd. Mark, where do, we, do you see the sport right now in Britain? I think it's really exciting that fighters are getting paid good money to get in the ring and risk their life. Because sometimes, you know, you've got all people talking about these fighters and running them down of their, their performance, forgetting that they're risking their life when they go in that ring. One punch. We've seen it before throughout our history. You know, you, 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 we never forget the Gerald McLennans of this world. You know, everything can change. Mm. So we're really happy to see that the money's going in. The downside is the we're, we're missing it on, on home ground. We're missing it on home ground because the Saudis have got the dough and the fighters are happy to fight wherever it is because that paycheck's still going into their account. So they don't care where they've got to go as long as that money goes in their account. And we got to come and we got to give it up for the fighters and, and, and appreciate the fact that they're getting paid now because we've wanted that for a long time and a long time fighters have been getting the least and the promotions and everybody else is making all the dough. So it's lovely that, you know, there's a playing, um, a playing field now that's more even. Spencer, you said a million percent AJ Fury happens if they both get through their fights in Saudi. Still think that? One million percent. <laughs> it's got to happen. It's got to happen. Because everybody wants to see that fight. But listen to this. In Ghanu, everybody knows that in Ghanu can put any heavyweight down. And that's the exciting part of this fight. Because even AJ knows. And he's going to be very careful to make sure that his defense is up. This is what his team should be working on. Making sure that he's tight, making sure he's letting go punches in bunches and not being afraid and not being gun shy. Just really getting in there, sitting in the pocket, defending punches that are coming back and responding with counter punches. That's the kind of fight I'd love to see from AJ and I think we're gonna see that kind of fight from him. It's gonna be an exciting fight for however long it lasts. Spencer, you said that uh, it could be a mismatch. It could, AJ could make it look like a mismatch. He has the more experience. Oh, listen, I'm going to say, you know what? The reason, and I'm glad that Mark Prince is here, right? The reason why I'm saying that this fight could potentially be a mismatch because we've never seen a fight where Anthony Joshua's gone in there at high octane in a big money fight and he's the man with a greater experience. 
but, the wrist. Right, right, right. But what I am going to say is this. Because, um, Charlie, you've been around a little bit now, yeah? Charlie. No, Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, Charlie. Right, Charlie, you've been around for a little while, yeah? I'm saying to you, if you look, anti Joshua, second round against Dylan White. Yeah. What punch did he get hurt with? Hook. Left hook? Yeah. When he gets dropped against Ruiz, what punch did he get dropped with? Left hook. When Francis Ngannou dropped Sai of Fury, what punch was it that dropped him? Left hook. Exactly. <laughs> so therefore, Anti Joshua better, better, be, better be catching the phone, better be answering the phone on a regular there to block that left hook. Uh, and I really do believe that Andy Joshua's going there with a great experience. Andy Joshua is meant to walk this. But when I say things like that, it don't come out like that. But in my honest opinion, this new age Andy Joshua, if he just boxes and shows this guy that there is levels to this and doesn't get drawn in, I think Andy Joshua actually walks this fight and so makes it kind of easy. One for him. Yeah, that's just, right. just keep building off what you've just been doing in your last couple of fights, build on that. Don't worry about Ngannou's size, the power, just walk in there and do what you've been doing and you'll be too much for him. But he, Charlie, you saw the size, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, Joe, Joe, on the real day, Joe. He's a big, he's a huge yeah. unit. Right, brother, you saw the size of Francis Ngannou, yeah? yeah? Tell the truth, it's intimidating, isn't it? He's a big guy, he's a big guy. <laughs> Bloody guy. Right? But, and this is the difference. For the first time, AJ, usually AJ goes into guys and he is the, he's the Adonis. The he's the guy. This time he's not going to be. So therefore, you've got to work with your smarts. And I believe that if he goes to the smarts, then AJ's going to win the fight. Last one. One word answer, both of you. Boatsy or Aziz? Boatsy or Aziz? You're sitting on the fence. Mark, you still going to stay on the fence? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> This one's really hard. <laughs> so at one point, I was in my car and I was thinking, Dan, I just got this feeling, this eerie feeling that Dan's going to do something. And then I'm talking to Boatsy, talking to Jeff, his trainer, his team, and I, and I just think he can't lose. So I'm, I'm kind of stuck in between the two. He can't lose this fight. And he, and he does have an edge with talent and skill, but Dan's this threat and that could just tear up the script. I'm going to go with the guy. I'm going to... Oh, I'm going to go with the guy that is supposed to be winning this fight, knowing that my gut's churning like Dan Aziz. He's my good mate. It's, it's really possible to tear this up. But I'm, 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 if you want a decision, I'm going to go with Boatsy because of the edge. But I know that I could be back on here with, like, custard. Your towel seat between your legs, yeah. You know what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> Excellent. So, Mark, it was a bit longer than one answer, but thank you very much, bro. Thank you much. Thank you. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Get a sign-up bonus of 200% up to $25,000 when joining today. Sign up now. Terms and conditions apply. Vote for IFL in this year's Sports Podcast Awards. Go to www.sportspodcastgroup.com and vote for us in Best Combat Sports Podcast and the Diverse Voices Awards categories. IFL Pod, available across all major streaming platforms now.